Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, if you're a game developer in the 2020s, it's amazing just how spoiled for choices we are. We have access to AAA quality game engines for completely free, asterisk to start. And of course we've got some really high quality open source game engines, we've got game engines for making RPGs, for making platformers, we just have so many game engines. And what I'm going to talk about today is yet another option, but this is a great option. Today we're going to look at Unigen, or Unigen. I'm going to call it Unigen, you can pronounce it either way. I think. Uh, and you've probably heard of this one before. In fact, I covered this one somewhat recently on my channel um, about a year back. And there's been one really major flaw with taking this engine completely serious. And that, frankly, was the pricing. So as you can see, uh, it can be used to make games. And I'm actually starting off by demonstrating a game in action. So this is one of the demos you can work with. Uh, oops, okay, I'm dead. Uh, with Unigine and Exit. There we go. So there we are. We're back at Unigene.com. We're going to get back to that demo in just a second. And like I said, I talked about this guy a while back. It's been around for years, at least 20 years. It's made in uh, Russia, I believe, somewhere um, Eastern Europe anyways. And it's been mostly used in the enterprise world. So, uh, you know, they call it um, serious gaming or things like uh, training simulators, uh, visualization tools, VR learning facilities and tools and that kind of stuff. And, um, well, they've been trying to break into the game market for a while. They've actually had a couple of games um, made with it. Nothing huge, but uh, it has definitely shipped a couple games, and it's very capable of making games. And I actually said, I covered this back in October of 2019, so it wasn't that long ago. And in October, uh, they did a, um, a new tier, basically, a new set of pricing for it. Uh, so they now have a... Um, community edition or sorry a media edition which was at a lower reduced price so if you want to go hands-on with unigen i've got that document there i actually think we're going to go a little bit more in depth with it but here is the existing price as it stands so you've got unigen entertainment in at 83 dollars a month and we go up to engineering for nine thousand dollars flat and then sim for contact us so this is a ten thousand dollar game engine or 83 dollars a month and the reality is that's kind of a hard sell in a world where we have Unreal and Unity available for free to start, Unreal obviously using a uh, royalty system at the end, and Unity using a um, revenue capped licensing system. So in Unity, you can make up to X amount of dollars before you have to pay for a seat. And so why would you pick Unigine over either of those game engines? And the, the truth of the matter is you probably wouldn't. So what we've got now is Unigine Community is coming out. And this is a pretty big deal because this is basically bringing Unigine on par with Unity for pricing. And another problem that we had with Unigine in the past is getting hands-on with it was always a little bit dumber than it needed to be. It was one of those, you know, apply to us and we'll get back to you with a license key if we deem you worthy. Now it's much more open process, or at least now being very, very shortly. So any day now, literally sometime this week, but I don't know the exact day, they are launching Unigine Community. So there's going to be another tier in here. So I believe this is going to be Community Pro, a rebranding. And there's going to be a new tier called uh, Unigine Community. It's going to be free for anyone that makes less than $100,000 per year. Uh, and then on top of that, it's also free for non-commercial projects, regardless to your income. So it's either an and or there. So if you make less than uh, 100K a year, or you are working on a free product, it's free. Uh, so it's not available in certain areas, so you can't use it in defense-related projects, enterprises. So basically, in these markets there, the real-world simulation stuff, you can't use the free version for that stuff, and you can't use it for gambling. Uh, but that's it. It's free. No royalties. So if you make less than 100 grand a year, you can use Unigine completely free. If you do, you'll have to upgrade to this tier. Now, I don't know if the pricing on this tier is going to change as part of that. I don't know if this tier in general, I know it's going to get renamed, uh, but... Uh, basically what they're giving you now is a hundred thousand dollar buffer and that does put it pretty much on par with unity so now it's really kind of come down to is it worth it here we are in the Unigine main editor. You're going to see it's a pretty complete tool. It's got a really nice UI for the most part. It's uh, clean, well working. The only thing I've really found with it is that uh, um, high DPI support is a little flaky. I have to either run in 1080p or I have a heck of a lot of trouble seeing it. But this is the world we were just running through. You can see the various different items and entities within it. 
like this guy right here. They show up over here in your world node over there. So let's go take a look. So we've got all the static stuff organized into a static world. Let's go ahead and find something dynamic. So here we got a bunch of enemy robots in this group. Go ahead and pick one. Here is an enemy robot. And I'm going to grab one of these. We can right click and then we can focus on that entity. So you might wonder, okay, well, how is the coding and logic being done here? Well, this is basically what you can consider a prefab. So I can grab this guy. We'll go into edit mode. This basically turns it from prefab into an actual entity. You can see here it is composed of a collection of properties and properties can be things like, uh, in this case, uh, code driven um, components. So here we got the en enemy controller and the fire controller. We'll look at the code in just a second. But you're going to notice we've got a bunch of exposed properties from it. It's nice. It's very simple to expose things out from code and over. You can also have targets. So I could drag in another entity here. Um, so the body, I could drop in another entity there and it would replace it. Um, so you have this nice integration between your code and in your editor. Now, in terms of languages, you've got a couple of different options. It could be C++, C Sharp, or their own custom scripting language. And there's a ton of resources to get you started with any particular one of those. We'll look at those in just a few minutes when we head back over to the launcher. But this is your, your game editing environment. It's where you, you know, place things in the scenes. You've got uh, control for, um, you know, physics objects, uh, entities, components on so forth. So we can add new properties in properties in many ways can be considered the same thing as a, a component in other engines. And you've got pretty close to a consistent level of work there. And we've also got a number of different uh, rendering options here for things, uh, material properties uh, that can be set for entities within the world. I think this is something I'm going to look at in closer detail at some point. Now that there's this community version available, I think I'm going to get my hands on this one and learn how to basically create a simple game, show you guys how to do that. So I'm not going to go into a ton more depth, but you get an idea of how things works. But instead of uh, being all... Um, uh, let's say component driven, it's property driven, but it's just basically another name for the same thing. Same thing, you got your assets down here. Obviously you can bring in um, models from outside with animation and so on. So let's, for example, go down here to the robot section. You'll see here we have a robot FBX file that has been brought in. You can preview it down there. Uh, you can bring in the uh, all the textures and such that are controlling it. Uh, you've got control over how all those assets are handled and coded like you would expect. Nice little navigation system down here. You've got the ability to import directly right here. If you look at the import options, you've got, uh, well, it goes quite a ways off the screen, but almost all the image formats you would expect. Most of the model types you would expect to be able to bring in are there. Also, you can come down here, you can create uh, materials, properties. Again, things are property driven in this end. C sharp components, worlds, worlds are the entire thing that you're seeing in front of you, and so on. So uh, that is the editor side of things. It's, I don't know, I don't really have much to say. You can see a trigger in the world. Let's grab that again. So here you can see that it's, it's a door trigger. Things come into a, a certain, um, area of it is defined by door door.node we can configure that node right here so you see here it's got door.cs script attached to it and it's got an animation trigger to find the duration of it uh the trigger right here is defined there you can literally just have dragged that in from the uh, you know so you bring it in that way or you can bring it in from down here just drop it into the slot and then that is what controls it so door.cs is the logic of that guy but you can drop any kind of property into one of these fields that is valid and you are good and off to the races on top of that you get a ton of graphical options as you can quickly see from the menu here it, it is a full-blown um game engine for sure in that regard. So if you want to bring on depth of field, you click it on here and we've got a ton of different features there so um yeah, that's the editor side of things. Now on the code side of things, in this particular case, I created a C-sharp project or this project that I'm using is a C-sharp project. And you see we've got source. I did not mean to move you. Source is broken down into the main game loop, which is really, really simple. So you see here it creates a, an app system logic, world logic, and app editor logic. And each one of these things is basically a bunch of callbacks. Uh, in it and the initialization, the update, render shutdown, world initialization, world shutdown, world save. Those are going to be run in the editor only. System controllers, world controller, logic all goes there. But for the most part, it's going to more be in your data category here. So you can see here we got game components here. As mentioned earlier on, there is the door. Um, here is how door was defined. And as I mentioned, there was all those things that were being driven from the editor side of things. Well, it's as simple as doing a show and editor and you can define tool tips for those things. And basically these objects are now exposed out to the editor. You can define at the editor level, but your code here, straightforward C sharp code for doing all of your scripting. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. You can come in here, for example, there is a simplified player controller. This is an example of, you know, um, 
you know, the character walking around. Your definitions are pretty straightforward. Everything is it's pretty clean and easy to understand C sharp codes. So if you're already familiar with C sharp, uh, you learn everything you need here, and you can see some examples for creating uh, physics and setting up the physics on a world controller, uh, setting its position in the world, everything else. So again, if you're comfortable with C sharp, you're going to find Unigine's implementation very simple. And the nice thing is, again, you got that nice integration back over into the editor. So the simplified player controller exposed all of these properties out at the start. Come back over here. Let's go back to the editor right now and let's find the player. It's under its own. So here, character right there. And there you can see the simplify player controller class has been exposed. And then, so the forward key, if I want to switch the forward key out to another key, I can do it here. It automatically picks up the type of the property that is being exposed and fills in the dialogue accordingly. There's also a fire controller that's been um, defined and a fire controller has been dropped in here, but I could grab any other compatible node and literally drop it in and replace it that way. So you got a nice integration between your code and your editor. It's pretty straightforward manner. It's pretty clean and easy to understand. All right, so that is kind of my quickie, quick look at it. Um, the other thing that you get here is your SDK browser, and this one is where you log in. I've also had some issues, at least with this version. I'm using a pre-release version of 2.11, which is coming out uh, probably at the same time. Um, I, I've had some login issues with me using this on multiple computers. I'm having to reboot every time I close my project down, which is a little irritating, but hopefully that kind of stuff gets resolved. Uh, you can come on in here. Basically, the first thing you're going to do is come in and download the SDK. You have multiple different versions. Generally, I'm using, again, 2.11-beta2. Uh, 2 2. If I wasn't in the community edition here, if I was using the full version, there'd be a bunch available here. But currently, this is the only community version available. Who knows when this actually goes live, what the option is going to be there. But I expect... Uh, 2.11 is going to be released very, very soon. Um, then on top of that, you've got a number of different add-ons you could bring in. Nothing here yet for uh, the community. Uh, on the other side, there were several different add-ons that could be brought in. I imagine that's gonna expand over time. But here's where you're really gonna kind of get into it. You've got a bunch of demos to work from. So the one that I'm working from right there is literally this demo. So if you wanna grab it, basically install one and then copy the project and you can start working with it. Otherwise, you can load and run them directly right here. So here's a bunch of ones showing uh, Uni Unigine script implementation. So we got a bunch to work with there. We've got some for working with the C++ API. So if you're wanting to work with C++, uh, there's a number of examples that you can do here. The cool thing is, again, you don't actually have to implement them. You can grab one of these and literally just run the example and it will run. And you can also open up the code directly without creating a version of it. So you can go through the samples and learn things really nicely. C Sharp, we got a couple of examples there as well. Uh, by the way, this demo is in C Sharp. Obviously, it's called the C Sharp third person controller. Uh, there's also C Sharp component samples and betas available as well. So there's enough there to get you up and going, regardless to which of the three programming languages you want to work from. And then their knowledge base is pretty solid. So you've got um, you know forums, online documentation, and so on to get you up and going. And again, I, I'm impressed enough by the initial release that I think I'm going to do a getting started tutorial on this guy. But let me know what you guys think. Are you, are you interested now that they have this community release out there to learn a bit more about it or is it is it too late in your opinion so really that's it uh, i there's i don't know exactly the date the, the community edition is going to be dropping i know it was this week and we are in the middle of this week so i literally expect it to be any second now and again if you're interested in learning more head on over to unigene.com uh that's kind of it. I will link an article down below with the details I've got about the new pricing. I imagine, again, we're going to get a formal announcement from them any second now uh, so we can, you know, uh, get a bit more details. But for the, a bit of a recap, it is a uh, 100000 um $100,000 revenue limit otherwise or completely free usage. And uh, that's, yeah, the new mobile. So I'll make sure that I actually post something again, probably not another video, but one community is released. I will drop a, a note on Game From Scratch and on my Twitter feed, uh, at Game From Scratch. Uh, so if you are waiting for the community release that I'm talking about today, it should drop again anytime now. So let me know what you think of Unigine, Unigine community. Uh, the fact that we have another professional game engine in that free to start with kind of space, is it kind of getting too crowded for you or do you welcome more options? Now, I honestly, I report on these things, so obviously, I like to have much, as much as possible to report on, but I'm mean, curious where you guys stand on this and if you are interested in seeing more about Unigine in the future. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.